tonight, guys, we're doing something a little different. I'm doing my pick one. I've got David in here because I want him to blind taste this. Yeah, I have no idea what she picked for me, but I'm excited because it, well, I'm excited because I think it's going to be bourbon. A little bit of brown sugar. Oh, yeah. That smells nice. Getting raspberry jam. A little bit of caramel. Actually, a lot of caramel. Really dark. It's got a little bit of a proof spice on the nose. Getting a little bit of kind of a, a an oak barrel as well. Maybe a hint of some dry fruit. It smells pretty nice to me. Yeah, let's get into it. Cheers. Cheers. On the palate, oh, I get... Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. Like, wow, yes, that's great. A little bit of everything. That is a, that's got a lot going on in this bottle, in this uh, cup. A little bit of butterscotch, too. <laughs> yeah. I get oak, butterscotch, caramel... A little bit of vanilla, red berry. Yeah, I'm getting... The thing that jumps out to me is red berry. I'm thinking Buffalo Trace something or other. It's got a really nice... Uh, there's like a really nice caramel and vanilla to it. It's got a really nice balanced finish. Mm -hmm. I feel it's it's cody. It's not too much. It's, it's almost like perfect. It leaves that lasting taste. There's just a little bit of a bite up front of some proof, some spice, some barrel char. It goes into this Ooh. nice balanced, like creamy vanilla. Yeah, creamy vanilla would just still that little red berry on the finish too. There's just a little bit of it. That's really nice. That's a good, that's a good bourbon. David. What? What do you think it is? Uh, if I were to guess, I'm get, I'm thinking E.H. Taylor single barrel. It's not, I don't think it's Elmer T. Lee. Uh, it's not proof enough for a stag. It could be a Weller. No, it's not a Weller. I don't think so. This is not like process of elimination. This is like, what okay. do you think it is? E.H. Taylor single barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so here's I almost I... said Blanton's. I was like, nah, she wouldn't have picked so, Blanton's. So, well, the funny Dang part you, is, Blanton's. is I picked it just because I wouldn't normally pick yeah. Blanton's. So... If you go way back to some of my videos early on, I didn't like Blanton's at all. It didn't do anything for me. Yeah. I thought it was a basic bourbon, what bourbon tastes like, smells like. And mm -hmm. it's what off put me before when I was first starting out. Yep. And remember you tried to um, slip it into my cup when we we're went in South Carolina uh, yeah, yeah at a restaurant and you were like what is it guess what it is and you gave me like a shelf full of bourbons to choose from and I could I didn't pick it because I liked it yeah you're like it can't be Blanton's what else could it be and she's guessing everything's but Blanton's because yeah it, and that's what I, I mean I said in the video where we talked about it or live stream when we talked about that before and I've said it several times Blanton's isn't bad it's pretty good Particularly when it's not up against other things. When yeah. I, for me, when Blanton's doesn't do well is when I put it up against other bourbons. But when it stands by itself, that's actually much better than I remember. Yeah, it's really good tonight. Okay, Blanton's Buffalo Trace Sazerac, uh, owned by Sazerac, comes in at 93 proof. It's a single barrel. It's one of the original single barrels in theory. It is really well thought of. It retails right around $65. However, it's very, very sought after. It's hard to find. And usually on the secondary market, you're going to pay anywhere from 150 to 220, maybe even a little more. You might see it higher. Realistically, the price that you're going to pay is probably somewhere between 100 to 150, 160 most places. And it's, is it worth that price? Would you pay $130 for this bottle? No. Neither would I. <laughs> it's good and I like it, but uh, I think there are other options. I'd pay 65 for it, maybe. Yeah, oh yeah. I think it's worth $65 every day. I think it's probably worth maybe 90 or even 100 bucks. Part of the reason it's so expensive is is it's it's pretty good and people love the bottle shape. It's this iconic, you know, the grenade <laughs> bottle and it's got the little horsey toppers with the collectability aspect to those because they all have different letters on them, but it's a little overhyped. Question for you. Now, yes. has this been the same Blanton's that I've tried way back in the day? Is no. this So we 
we go through Blanton's pretty regularly, right? This but... is, I think, the second bottle of Blanton's that I've had open. The okay. first one's over there that I turned into the little light decoration. But this is the this is the only other one. We don't actually drink it that often. I don't drink it except for really in blinds. So Buffalo Trace really has three different bourbon uh, recipes. They have a high rye, a low rye, and then they have the uh, the the weeded bourbon recipes. So those are the, really the three Buffalo Trace recipes. And, and really any of the Buffalo Trace non-weeded bourbons are going to be comparative to this, but a lot of those are very hard to find. I personally think that the 10-year Eagle Rare is actually a little bit better because it has a little bit stronger age characteristic to me. Mm -hmm. And some of the Eagle Rares aren't quite as good, but some are better. Another good alternative to Blanton's, and, and I know they're high rye versus low rye recipes, I, I understand, but um, I think the John J. Bowman out of uh, A. Smith Bowman Distillery here in Virginia, okay. which is also Buffalo Trace product, mm -hmm. I think that is actually a very good alternative to this as well. Cool. So, and there's a possibility that maybe the Blanton's bottle you had before that I tried way back, mm -hmm. the one that I really didn't like when I didn't like Blanton's, mm -hmm. there could be a possibility it was just a different... Uh, different bottle, different yeah. taste. Yeah, totally. Because they are single barrels, there are subtle variations. I've never had a Blanton's that wasn't good. Mm -hmm. I just... It's just not something that I get tend to get super excited about. And it's mm -hmm. like I said, especially when I put it up against other mm -hmm. other similar Buffalo Traces, whether it's Eagle Rare, E. H. Taylor's, even the 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 John J. Bowman. When I put them up against this, that's when the specialness of this really gets exposed as not being that special. Right. Uh, and and I think the hype isn't worth it. It's awesome. good though. It's still really good. I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, I just I yeah. I, tend to I, I like it. it. It's easy sipping. It mm -hmm. it tastes really good. But I think you're right on when you say up against in a blind, mm -hmm. it may not do as well because it kind of loses its specialness um, when it comes to the tasting notes. I feel like too. You know what we should do. What? We should do, not today, but we should do a in another video, we should do a video where we put Blanton's up against the other somewhat available Buffalo Traces and see how it does. Put it up against an E.H. Taylor small batch, uh, an Eagle Rare, plain Buffalo Trace, and John J. Bowman and have a five-way blind with Blanton's and see how it does. Yeah. All right. Goodness. If you guys like what we're doing here on Beyond the Road, please subscribe to the channel. And smash that like button if you like Blanton's as much as Jamie. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Way back a year ago.